I can't change an industry. There, there's an industry issue that's a whole different thing, but I can change a life of an agent. And so having buyers, and I think with the new lawsuit coming up, are really going to be what quality do you add? What value do you actually add to me? Because now they're paying for the quality. Possibly we'll find out. But now they have to pay for it. So it's just like I feel like there's going to be a level of expectation of how it should be. And you need to be and know your product and Mm -hmm. you should know yourself and or what self you want to sell because people are going to start looking for that more than just like you, you just sell it. You just open doors. Awesome. Don't let them believe that Mm -hmm. because my clients know I do more than open doors. back to the Real Estate Excellence Podcast. Today's guest was recently recognized by the Jack's Business Journal as one of the top real estate agents in Jacksonville, Florida. She is an expert in moving to St. John's County slash St. Augustine. After being a wedding planner, she took her people in relationship skills to real estate with a goal to be forever real estate agent for every client she works with. Let's welcome this momentum champion with Momentum Realty, Demi Judd, to the show. Welcome. Hello, hello. Hello. Glad you can make it over here this morning. Thank you um, for the invite. A little earlier than normal is uh, we've got uh, pressures on. <laughs> <laughs> this ever-changing market, and we got to be moving and grooving. But I want uh, re- really interested in, I was listening to your a previous podcast you were on, and, and listening to, which was good because it gave me some, kind of some, I will call it color commentary in between the things, because you, you have a passion. For it. And I'm going to dig into that today because I think, you know, as I tell every guest that comes on, whether it's tomorrow or three years from now, one of your clients or you mentioned possibly building a team on that show, you know, someone who wants to work with you, they can listen to this show and, and learn a little bit about Demi. Yep. Yep. So let's kick off the show. Tell me a little bit. You, you're from this area. Tell me whereabouts. Where'd you go to school? Uh, I went to school at St. Augustine High School. Oh, okay. I graduated from St. Augustine High and um, was born at Flagler Hospital. I can't be any more local than that. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, right in the northern area, so I'm right near Palencia. Yeah, yeah. I have a bunch of family living in, in the Palencia area. But you remember, although you're not that old, but Cole Slate's not that old either. And he remembers a lot of the roads, like 210, being dirt. Yes. Yeah. I was driving through Silverleaf yesterday, and I was like, this was dirt. I was like, this yeah. was trees. I'm a deer. It just didn't make sense. I was like, this is not how it was when I was a kid. All the Fee's Pizza wasn't there, obviously. Right, right. But even my neighborhood, we didn't have a Publix. Like, when yeah. I, I remember not having a Publix at Palencia. Mm-hmm. Um, and so it's just Well, nice. you might even remember Palencia wasn't even there. Yeah. Because the food line was in there first, mm-hmm. right? And then uh, and that went out of business, and, 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 and you know, how much that's changed. But- you know, World Golf Village sort of popped up, but then it's still in an infancy stage, uh, mm-hmm. that whole uh, sector along International uh, was it International Parkway. Is that mm-hmm. the, the, yeah, that's what they call it. When you're, you mentioned on the uh, previous podcast, and I'll probably refer to that a bunch of times because I was listening to it for the last hour. So when you're working with clients, being, I mean, going to St. Augustine High, which it, I know is with the new high schools going up, there's a lot of people in you know, Palencia and the challenge of, you know, and your, where your new home's at, I assume is slated for St. Augustine High. Is no, that it's Nice now. Nice now mm-hmm. at the moment anyway, right? You're correct. It might change tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, uh, it, it can. That's yeah. the that's the crazy thing that's going on. But, the, you know, a lot of people were up in arms about St. Augustine High. And when Palencia, they were talking about, you know, kids were going to go there to St. Augustine High. When you're working with clients and dealing with, because that's a difficult situation. And it's, I don't understand yeah, St. Augustine High is the oldest school in town. Mm-hmm. Oh, in the county. Okay, great. You know, but I, I'm I'm sure you know as the county is, is trying to take care of that as upgrade because it's the load's going to be put on St. Augustine High as its niece has already blown. You know, been blown out. Mm-hmm. You know, how do you when you're working with a client? And I'm, I'm sure there's other agents that are working with. How do you have that discussion? 
you know, or even, do they even know a lot of times or are they just getting like hearsay from their friends? Like, oh, you don't want to move there because the kids will have to go. They have kids that will have to go to this school or that school. And not talking about St. Augustine in general, but when you're dealing as a real estate agent, dealing with schools. What's schools yeah. Yeah. Typically. So I kind of protect myself because there's only so much legally we can right, say. Right. I have local guides for people from out of state. And so I create the local guides and it actually has QR codes for the school ratings. And... I, I'm open about how I feel as a parent about the school my child goes to or one I've been to. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, right now I'm going to talk as a parent. I really love Palencia Elementary. My son goes there. And then I really love... The only, um, problem, the only problem with Palencia Elementary is you can't get the golf courts to the door. They, they stop you at the circle there. They do now? Yeah. If, well, I don't know. that my, my my wife's sister lives in there and cousin lives in there. And I get you... The, they can can't go by that circle. You can't actually drive all the way unless oh, they've yeah. changed that. I mean, I haven't, I don't think I have a school anymore. <laughs> <laughs> he takes the bus. Um, yeah. I've seen, there's two entrances. Yeah. I've seen Kensington do it. Kensington will bring their little golf carts, but I don't know though. That also, I don't drive it to a school. Mm. I'm not going through all that. He's not in kindergarten anymore. Yeah. <laughs> Take the bus. But yeah, I just, I really give my, my experience as a mom. I have had a client ask me about St. Augustine High before, but I went for Center for the Arts. I'm very outgoing if you don't mm-hmm. know me. <laughs> yeah. But so I was in show choir and I was in all of that. So that made sense for my family to stay there. And not like we had a ton of options like they do now. Um, Did but, you perform? In, it was like a, around Christmas time a year ago at Flagler with the whole. They had no, all the alumni. <laughs> I wanted to. You wanted? I I just didn't have the time. My dad um, had a stroke and oh. a heart attack, and so we were. I was a little preoccupied. Yeah, so they've had a history of the arts or you know the music program there. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Jeff Dodd did amazing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So anyway, but having this conversation, you know, you got to tread lightly. Mm-hmm. You know, you don't want to violate any any laws. But like you said, you 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 speak from just experience from from what you've seen and leave it at that. Yep, just yeah. complete. And they feel pretty good about that. They're like, "Where would you move?" And that's always a kind of safe gray question that they're asking. <laughs> and I was like, "I would move to this area, and I like this." And I even posted a video recently, like, "These are the neighborhoods I would move into, and here's why." And that kind of put a blanket over it to understand. Right. But I tell people too, like new areas mean new schools, new schools mean new teachers and new curriculum. And I was like, so that's always a really good sign. I was like, don't feel overwhelmed. That's brand new school working out the kinks. It's not like an HOA. Yeah. And so they feel a little bit better. Like, okay. Yeah, you're right. And I was like, they don't have time to have all the ratings that everyone else does. And I was like, and it's a whole different, I was like, you just have to look at the areas, look at the neighborhoods, do your research. That's how I try to stay like, <laughs> don't go there. Are, like, are, are you, you made me think of this quick because we're talking about, you know, what you can and cannot say or how you say it basically as a real estate agent. I, I find it humorous. You can't call the master bedroom master bedroom anymore. I mean, one stuff of my like- clients just texted me, he's, hey, so in the master, and I was like, which room? And he's like, <laughs> I was like, you mean the primary? And he's just like, oh. he's, you guys have dumb rules here in Florida. <laughs> and I was like, it, it, it's not Florida, it's just in general. Yeah, or the Jack and Jill bathroom. You know, the sharing, the, the kids. Oh, you room. can't call it that? I, that's what I was oh, told. I don't know. What's wrong with Jack and Jill? I don't I, know. They ran up a hill. That's, <laughs> what, that's what it was. Um, all right. So you graduate from St. Augustine High. What are you, what's, um, and, and you go on a little bit why, because you did tell the story of why you uh, chose uh, the college you did uh, a little bit uh, with uh, Maurice and Chris, but what were you thinking from a career wise as, you know, 19, 20, 21 years old. What was Demi thinking she was going to do? Oh, De- Demi graduating and when she was in high or college, she was going to do missions and she was going to change people's lives and travel mm. the world. And that's what she was going to do. She was engaged to an Italian too. <laughs> yeah, fun fact. I really, I really wanted to live in Europe and I wanted to serve in Europe and I, that's what my passion was. And it didn't stop. It just looks different now. Yeah. And so I'm very thankful. I even like, I mean, I wanted to come back and work for my church, all these different things, but life is expensive. And it was right in that heat of like, my church was going through a change. And I was like, you guys can't really provide what I need financially. And then so it kind of just went to like, I fell into 
wedding planning. Right. Just when I came back home, I was like, okay, this is the engagement didn't work out. And Kim, Harry, man, you just met. I fell into that. Oh, so that's another story for another show. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Which I actually did. But that's another story. But I ended up just, okay. I so just came home just looking for a job. Yeah. And my neighbor was like, hey, I have someone in the wedding industry. And mm-hmm. I was like, cool. I've always wanted to be a wedding planner. Let's go. I watch four weddings every night with my dad. <laughs> and I I met her. She's like, I do other events. I only need an assistant. I was like, no problem. Started working with her. And we did our first wedding together two weeks after I started. And I was like, you, you, you gestured to your dad to remember your dad was a, a minister or something. He No. So my dad, I, he acts like one, um, <laughs> but, but he's, um, my dad's my best friend. He, yeah. he's the one who brought our family to Jesus. Like he's just an amazing man. Right. But he, you said he, you were watching four weddings with him every night. What, what were you gesturing there? No, we just just that we he literally watch, does everything with me. Like we're we're best friends. Oh, you mean what did you like say? We what, watch. You're... So I gesture to our four four weddings because I was in four weddings. So oh. it's like a huge show about competitions for brides. Okay, All I was right. there I was go. in it. My okay. bride won. So oh. like that's like fast forward into being a wedding planner. Though. <laughs> I met a bride and groom, and they're like, "Hey, so." weird thing we got invited to be a part of four weddings and i was like sweet when do you start and they're like we don't know we need four other brides or three other brides and i was like uh, what what and they're like can you find three other brides mm-hmm. i called so many venues that day because i was like i can be on four weddings and so without having you know to pay for it and- i i personally <laughs> don't know about this show but oh. i imagine if you're getting married this is something you would watch to see what the local yes. la- latest trends and yes. everything it's on tlc uh-huh. It's great. Of Look course. up the St. Augustine one. I'm on there. It's okay. at the Treasury at one. Obviously, it was at the Treasury. So yeah. you had to find three other brides fairly locally. Yes. Okay. That were getting married around the same time. And then what was the com- what was the actual basis of the competition? The competition is like they kind of rate each other. It's like their dress, their venue, their decor, their food. So what they choose. Yeah. Or what their wedding planner so, helps them. Like if you were getting married, it'd be like, mm, your dress isn't that great. So yeah. it just, like, <laughs> kind of like I judge your wedding right. and rate you. And the winner with the more points gets to go on like a honeymoon. So they went to Italy. Ah, mm-hmm. interesting. Okay, yeah. well, that's, hey, that, if you're wedding planning, I'm sure that's something you want to be it's, part of. It's a big thing. Yeah. I, I would not want to be part of it now. So <laughs> from that, you, and I, was, I mentioned in the intro, because you, you mentioned your bio about being client folk or, you know, focused on the customer, customer oriented. And that's, what did you... Did it come naturally for you or was when you were observing what's going on in the wedding planning, what you actually have to deal with, uh, with some of these, I, I imagine you had some bridezillas, right? Yeah. And, yeah. and moms, the moms were actually the worst. Like brides were not even, it was the moms of the brides Yeah, and really just learning how to hold your tongue. I mean, customers, I've been customer service since I was 13. So mm. like I already knew how to hold my tongue pretty well. <laughs> I just make a joke. And so it makes it easier. But definitely it taught me a lot about, I mean, right there, you're basically doing real estate. Like we're, I'm trying to calm them down. I got calls in the middle of the night saying, do I love him? And I was like, oh, I'm in a therapist. Cool. And I didn't realize I got all the certification by being a wedding planner. And so it's crazy because now I do it and now I get phone calls from people from Alaska at 1am saying, Hey, is this our house? And so it's just funny how like, it went so well, which is funny because most people think that the two wouldn't really collide well. They collide great. They're two very big moments in life. Mm-hmm. One's just way more expensive than the other, surprisingly. <laughs> one lasts longer. Well, I don't, than the I don't other. know <laughs> how you which how you choose that investment. I'm, one is more expensive, but at least it has value to it. The one day event, uh, it's it's hard. You might as well just light a torch to it. Well, that's, <laughs> so I, one of my lead gen is doing bridal shows mm-hmm. um, that I used to be a part of as a wedding planner, and I have consults with brides and grooms like hey is this what you want to do and i've had ones that literally dropped all their wedding planning and bought a house and so it's just having that conversation i call it marriage or mortgage and you Mm. get to choose and so we kind of have that conversation is this the best option or how can i prep are you you welcomed at all these shows i am (laughs) i really am so the person who runs it's premier bride right is actually my friend from when i was in like in the industry and so we got really close and i was like do you think I could be like at your show? Like what I do well? She's like, actually, if any real estate agent was going to be there, you could probably do I, it. I've sold cell phones at, 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 at wedding 
shows. Oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that, that's kind of sketchy. Though. <laughs> like, we was back in the day when they were going from analog to digital phones, and mm-hmm. and like and it, but it, they were still trying to get every a handset in everybody's hand, mm-hmm. and there were still areas, a lot of areas of the country who didn't didn't have cell coverage, kind of like in the middle of Silverleaf, mm-hmm. where you drop every call, right? Mm-hmm. Now, and yeah. why that is, and if you're in the restaurants in the middle of Silverleaf, there's no coverage in those places. But anyway, <laughs> but they were trying to get handsets out there, so. We were just wherever we could put a table up and say, "Hey, we're we're here," because the the networks they wanted to get the, the handsets in everybody's hand. So I've been out in some real boonies. I I did. I remember what we did this was a uh, county fair. I mean, we killed it. I mean, I mean, hundreds of cell phones because you get all these people to travel in. You know, they got their horses or whatever. They're out in horse country, 20, 30 miles outside of any, norm, you know, subdivision or anything like that. And they're driving in, going to county fair, and they don't have a cell phone. Now, you know, and that, yeah. that's what that was the time period. Mm-hmm. Of course, you were just being born at that time. So, yeah. <laughs> they're going to be like, she's like 20, isn't she? Uh, like, they're going to think I'm so young. <laughs> but, I mean, you're still regularly doing them several times a year. Yeah, I just did one. Yeah. About two Sundays ago. Yeah. Yep. You never know. And, and, and when are, what are people thinking about after they get married? Uh, that's the next step. Yeah. The next yeah. step is buying a home. So why not get, you know, it might not happen next month. It might, might be a year or two, but you're getting in, getting in front of them. Now you have, you start dripping on them. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I think it's a, a, when I heard you say that, it just triggered my thoughts of the past, but it, it's brilliant. That's what those mm-hmm. people are planning. They're not only planning their wedding, their next plan is, you know, their house, yep. you know, and then the kid and that kind of all that stuff. What transitions you in the real, what happens at wedding that now you start thinking about real estate? It was a few things. I met my husband in 2018, and he had a four-year-old, and I wanted to be a mom, and I worked 100 hours a week. Like, I, it wasn't only wedding planning my boss did. It was also... So you wanted to be a real estate agent? No, hold on. <laughs> That's not... I fell into... I fell into a lot of things I've done in life, but definitely fell into that. I had a friend who was like, hey... He owns a brokerage now, too. So he's, hey, if you ever want to come over. <laughs> but he's, hey, do you want to be my assistant? And I was like, for a real estate agent who's, like, successful? Sure. Mm-hmm. I don't know what that looks like, but let's try. And I went in to meet him in person, have coffee about it. He's like, mm, I don't think it's going to work. And I was like, it's not going to work? And I was like, how do I get fired before I get hired? Am I okay? And he's, no, I think that you're going to kill it. You would kill it as a real estate agent. You'd be my TC. You'd quit and do it yourself. And I was like, can't afford to do that. So I left the wedding industry, served for a little bit to figure out serving tables, Mm -hmm. had a baby, and decided four months postpartum, I'm going to get my real estate license Mm because why not throw that on top of everything? (laughs) And I I just went for it. And he's, you're going to kill it. And he's like, but just give it like three to five years to pop off. And I'm like, all right, fair. Right. He lied. It did (laughs) not take that long. And I, I have been like... Now I have a real, like a coach. And so I've been like having help. Like, I'm like, I, this wasn't supposed to happen. Like, I, was, like, <laughs> I had three to five years to get my shit together. Yeah. <laughs> but, but yeah, that's how I fell into it. It was really just a friend saying, Hey, you should do this. Well, it's very interesting. I was at a mastermind last Friday over at Landmark with uh, a bunch of agents randomly all over. They were talking about teams and, you know, whether it's a team of real estate agents or a team with meaning you have support transaction coordinators or whatever. And one of the comments was, don't hire a transaction coordinator who's in it, whose thought is they want to become a real estate agent because they'll do it for a month or two. They'll see the checks that the real estate agents are getting and say, I can do that too. And they're, they're off that, that that's not the mentality of that, of a transaction coordinator. Yep. Yeah. My TC is amazing. She actually used to be a real estate agent, hated it. So now she's TCing and yeah. she doesn't mind. I don't want to be in your shoes. So yeah. I'll do this. Yeah. It happens in the loan officer world too. They, all, they, they come in, they don't know anything about, they don't even know how to spell mortgage. They're an assistant for a couple months and then they see what the mortgage loan officers can make. And they're, oh, I want to be, you know, and it, they don't have the experience yet and it's a you know little different i think real estate is one of those things if you do get under the right tutelage mentor coach whatever you can accelerate very quickly 100% there's probably a very minor percent that actually just get it alone but they generally come from a you know a, a previous career and just know how to organize themselves and just already, you know, and what to do so that they run it like a business and they go. Mm -hmm. But speak of that, you were a young person still 
at that time. We still are. And, you know, so th- was this, did this person become a mentor to you? Did you work side by side or did you go somewhere else uh, to hang your... I went somewhere else. I'm someone who, like, I like to try to figure things out on my own. Mm -hmm. And I never, I call it riding coattails. Like, I don't want to ride someone else's coattail. And I ended up going with a smaller brokerage in the area. And the brokerage let me bring my baby. So my daughter literally was at trainings. She'll be a professional. She's going to be my assistant one day. Um, She's already got the hours in, clocked. She she does. She does. Um, So I ended up going. I was at Red Zone. And so Mm -hmm. I started there. I was friends with Alyssa and her family. And so we all got very, very close. And so I was able to start off my career there a little bit where I could take my time and also just have a baby. Mm -hmm. So enjoy like being a mom. And that was really great. I joined their team, really built up kind of what I wanted real estate to look like for me. And I knew that marketing was a very good push for me to pursue. And then that's when I fell into my my team there. Literally. um, you know, hold hold that thought for a second. You said you don't like to ride on someone else's coattails. Yes. And I imagine you've had thousands of girlfriends ask you about real estate. Yes. You know, should I get into real estate? Is real estate? Yeah. I mean, all all the time. And your recommendations to them. Would you recommend, especially you know who you had you. There, you had some, I don't know if natural abilities, you know, but like you said, your customer service, you were doing the wedding planning, you were dealing with, already dealing with people's emotions and that sort of thing. Yeah, you, you bring in the technical part of, you know, you got to go take the class, you got to know if, you know, you can take training on how to fill out the contract. I mean, those things, you know, many, you know, average person because it's designed for average people to pass those things. If they put the effort in, they should be able to pass the test and and know how to fill out a contract. But the other human skills that you brought from wedding planning and Mm -hmm. so forth, not everyone has those right away. They kind of have to learn as you, you know, did a little bit, uh, uh, even before you got into real estate, you already had built those, that those experiences up. Right. So when it comes to go back to the riding coattails, would you recommend, you know, one of your girlfriend, Hey, yeah. Or you've got enough experience, ride my coattails, follow me around. I think you actually mentioned in that podcast I was listening to you in, I, I forget it was your brother or something. Someone related to you wanted to get in the business. You said, follow me for a day or two. Yeah. And they did. Mm-hmm. W- would you recommend that to, to one of your girlfriends that they really wanted to do it? I do yeah. every single time now, because also even since that podcast, I got a coach. And so I told her what I wanted to do and how I wanted to do it. I actually added a buyer's agent onto my team and mm-hmm. to try to test the waters to see what I'm looking for. And I learned a lot through my coach. But I do, it went from like the beginning of me being like, do not join real estate. Like just whatever you do. But then so many people kept asking because they'll see success and they're like, mm-hmm. I want that. And I'm like, oh, I don't know if you know what comes with this palette. <laughs> and so it's just, I had a friend who I've had a couple friends, but every time they're like, I want to do real estate, I'm going to get my real estate license. I'm like, follow me around for a day. And I was like, just follow me around for a day. Or I even went to Universal with one of them, answered my phone every single second. And she's being like, one of them was being immature and like yelling, like, why are you? And I was like, this is a business. If you, we can't be friends, if you can't understand that, I, take my job very seriously. Like mm-hmm. I could be at Disney. I could be at universal with you. I still run a business like no matter what. And so that's where it kind of clicked for her that she's like, I don't want to do this. And I was like, no, I'm literally, I told one customer, I was like, I'm a Disney princess. My entire life is out there. I was like, I don't have an option to hide behind a gate. I get to come home and shut my door and that's it. Like that's where I get to hide mm-hmm. because my neighbors, everyone's a customer. And so you want to make sure everyone still has the same experience. The branding still matches. So I try to, I let everyone know the truth behind that. And I was like, sometimes I was like, count hourly. I had one seller who's like, I don't think that I should pay you X, Y, Z. And I was like, can I tell you the hours that I've done? And I literally wrote it down. I was like, I'm barely making minimum wage with everything that I've done since we've been listed. And so I think the reality of that sinks in for people when they actually realize how much work goes into this. Yeah, no, I, I've challenged agents because in your gift bag there is a is a notebook from the bank for you to take note to to jot down like a lawyer does every you know thing that you do. Mm-hmm. You know, because I, I, I don't think you know, again, people don't realize the eight o'clock call. You're you know, on a on a Saturday 
or a holiday at, at Disney and you're, you know, you're over there in the corner trying to take a call where hopefully it's not too noisy, right? You know, because there's drama going on. There's people's emotions intact in, in here. Yep. Um, yeah, people don't realize that. Reminds me, I would do want to, I'm going to take a pause here for a little sponsorship, which you have one of these mugs in your gift bag there are uh, from Remy Graphics. They make these beautiful laser. She does a lot more than just put her remygraphics.com. Yes, yours is in there. <laughs> this is just one of the products she has. Any other laser engraved, and she had trophies and stuff posted there. You've got your nice Citadel Blue there, a Carolina Blue mug. But yeah, there you go. <laughs> they will do one offs. So if you have a customer and you want to do, hey, John and Sally, you know, established whatever, maybe the, the wedding type of thing, put your name on the back. I always recommend it. They'll never throw it away, right? Yeah. Uh, but she'll do one off. So you don't have to order, you know, 20 of them. You can order, say, hey, I need two of these, you know, put my customer's name for closing gift or whatever. No, so, I love that. Yeah. So thank you, Dunya Taylor with Remy Graphics. All right. Where we left off. <laughs> so, of real estate, friends. Um, yeah, friends in the real estate. Yeah. <laughs> so riding, riding the coattails. It's, it's important that, you know, talking to a lot of the great agents that have gotten off to a quick start that I've talked to, if you don't, some of our, like I said, have that natural, uh, because they maybe worked in corporate America for 20 years. You know, I think a, a Pamela Hoffman, she comes in, she had a very regimen and this is how she's going to run her business where, you know, not everyone came for that. And you need to, well, I think, I think it was great that you offered to show them before they even went and invested in getting their license, mm -hmm. you know, because I don't, like I said, I don't think the average person understands. And I think this, this whole NAR settlement garbage that's going on is going to have to raise everyone's game because you're going to have to have that conversation like you had with that gentleman when he said, hey, I don't want to pay you as much. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, and it's not bad. Like some people, it does work for. I'm not saying that riding coattails is bad because it's smart. Mm -hmm. Even the, the girl who's now working with me, she's like, I want to be like you. And I have a ton of agents who meet me and I was like, all right, well, I think, and that's where me and my coach, I think I've realized, I don't know if it's a team I'm really looking for, like a Demi Judd team. I don't know if that's what I want mm -hmm. more than I'm realizing more of what the passion is. And the passion is like making better agents. And I was like, talking to my coach, I was like, I, I was like, I felt this for two years now, but I had to have like, obviously I need to have sales and stuff that backs me up that my, my methods work. Mm -hmm. like, Do you think they go after you because you make it look easy? Oh, they think it's so easy. Well, because there's some people that, you know, you know how much, you know how much work you're actually doing. And then, you know, you, you know, I think some of us are, are, you know, when no one's listening, right, we're cursing it out and then yeah. and then we smile we turn around and we smile and they that's all they see is the smile right yeah. they don't see you sweating no, no not yeah. at all yeah or the crying in your car yes <laughs> they don't see that <laughs> where you're just like no this is wrong and like, let me cry oh, yeah, yeah. but i really want i think the future of demi is actually like more on the coaching side and really mentoring agents to be themselves and mm -hmm. be better because i feel like so many people like i heard it so many times in the industry which i'm flattered by all means but i'm just like I've always felt like I was held to the standard for my parents. And then people are like, oh, but I'm not Demi Judd. And I was like, no, you're not. Thank God. Really, <laughs> honestly. And I was like, I want you to be you. I don't want you to be me. I want to help you create real estate in your own way. Real estate doesn't have to be a cold call or an open house or a door knock. And I was like, it has to be you. You're real estate. Like, why can't you sell yourself? Not weirdly. But sell yeah. yourself because that's what clients know what they're getting. My videos are me. I... I'm funny. I make jokes, but I, I take my job very seriously. I know my information. I know my stuff and helping people. I've started doing within my brokerage, little consults with other agents for niches. And I'm like, what do you like to do? You could make your hobbies real estate. Like it, it, you can like all everyone at my gym at 12 o'clock when I go mm -hmm. at night, everyone knows I'm in real estate, Yeah. every single person. And so people ask me questions about real estate. So that is like a hobby I do but they know I'm in real estate. I'm not a secret agent. Yeah. But just being able to use your niche and things that you love. I love weddings, so I do weddings still. You, you, there's several things I want to write them all down because I'm going to forget them all that you just you mentioned there. The answering the phone at Universal or wherever you're Disney or whatever and your girlfriend's sitting there going, why are you answering the phone and explaining? Real estate, uh, I, I think everyone in the real estate, especially mortgage loan officers, are the same way because we have we we you know for the most part cater to you unless we have a call center, mm -hmm. you know cater to the agents. So when the agents are calling, we've got to answer the phone. I mean, even if it's five o'clock on a Saturday afternoon, and you're you know cooking steaks, you got you got to still pick up the phone because the agent's calling you for a reason. Yeah. Something's going down, and but 
I think a lot of people who aren't in the industry understand that we live our lifestyle. Yeah. I have the ability to leave here at one o'clock so I could take my son to his basketball practice at two 30 this afternoon, but my phone is still hot and my laptop is in the, if with me, mm-hmm. you know, if something needs to go down and, or I need, if I need to run home and cause I like to I'd rather work on the bigger screens than my laptop screen, you know, to, to run a, a quick pre-approval so that the agent can move forward with the transaction The people, I don't think they understand. We live our lifestyle. When you go to the gym, I, I think Jordan uh, Feria said it great or, or it wasn't Jordan. It was Erica Harding. She wears her, you know, something real estate, t-shirt at yeah. her son's ball games. I'm sure Jordan probably does too. Cause she's got little ones too. They're at their T ball games or whatever. They're little league games and they're sitting there. And so people are seeing her and they, you know, again, it's an easy subject to talk about. Yep. Everyone wants to talk about it. everyone wants a, a, a roof over their head and one way, whether they own a home or they just say, hey, we're thinking about what's going on tomorrow. It, it's an easy icebreaker to say, Hey, what, how's how's business been? Because they know that's the business you're in and they know what subject they're going to be talking about. You yep. know, so they open that there. It's an easy, easy go. So we live our lifestyle. So whether we're sitting there at seven 30 in the evening at, at the sun's ball game and in between innings, you they strike, you strike up a conversation. You, you're doing business this it's fun you might have a little cocktail in your hand but you are starting business because like I said, people aren't walking in and saying i want to buy a house today and five minutes later they're signing a die it doesn't happen that way no. there's gen- generally most people are, are, are doing a little more uh, uh due diligence and they're looking at different homes it's a it's something a relationship that might just be a week it might be a year or two who knows yeah yeah and, had some of those. Yeah. Well, right now, yeah, for surely with the, everything slowing down, it's not like it was in 2020 where you literally, you know, getting hundreds of offers or multiple teens of offers there on a, on a house within minutes. But I wanted to migrate into you were saying something there, uh, being authentic. Mm-hmm. And I want you to touch a little bit on your uh, evolution of social media. <laughs> Because you were touching about it with, with Maurice and Chris there a little bit, but I think it's important for everyone to understand because it's a journey you need to start. Mm-hmm. So you might as well just start it today. Yeah. But I look at your Instagram right now, I'm like, wow, this you know, she's she knows what she's doing. Mm-hmm. But that wasn't the way it always was. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, the, if you scroll far enough down, there's parts of me that's I want to delete it, but I'm like, no, like it is the evolution of Demi being who she is. Right. And, Oh my gosh. When I first was told I was on my team and they're like, you need to post videos. And I was like, I don't know what to talk about. I never closed a deal. (laughs) "Uh, Okay. And they're cringy. They're like, hi, I'm Demi Judd. It just, it's very (laughs) awkward or just weird. And then it started going from, I'll just do whatever's on keeping current matters, which is a great place to start. By the way, if you don't know, talk about keeping current matters a hundred percent. I don't know if I can say that, but great pod, you know, blog to read, to talk Mm -hmm. about because it's very informative and very accurate information but or to even call your local lender Mm -hmm. and get information on the rates and like where it's going where the predictions are because you know have some information rather than just saying whatever's being blasted not on a resourceful site but definitely going out there and like really knowing it too i started doing new construction i was like i'm selling a lot of new construction get out there if i know the neighborhoods i have knowledge and if I know things that people don't know, I can give information. And then it started, when I started getting my clientele, my questions were, what were your concerns about moving here? What did you like about moving here? What's pros, what's cons, what questions you wish you had answered? And I literally just started collecting sheets of paper of questions. And then I started creating videos and content based on those questions. Um, like schools are a big concern for people. Mm-hmm. What schools are coming to the area? How like what, how many people are in those schools? How many are they planning to build? Um, is there another one? Is it going to rezone? Cause it rezones every five seconds. To touch a, uh, cause I think, um, that part, I wouldn't, I don't want to say it's easy, but it, if you want topics, I mean, you can go on chat GPT and Correct. say, give me 10 topics, that, you know, and, and choose a couple. And you could do that every day if you wanted to. The big challenge getting over is you actually physically getting <laughs> over your fear. Yes. Did you have a camera fear? I mean, did, was that some hesitancy in you or you oh, were? I just had a baby in postpartum. Like definitely. <laughs> I hated everything about right. like how I looked and how it came out, but it ended up being like, I don't care. Like yeah. one, people are going to see me. So I didn't want to have a super big filter. Cause I'm like, they're going to see me like, Oh God, like, like that, you know, 50, 60 year old agent who has a 20 year old picture. Oh, like yeah. it just, it, 
it doesn't make sense. So I'm like, yeah. okay, I'll just have to, to go with it. And I mean, you can see if you go back far enough, how comfortable I got because it went from, I'm trying to give you a product I don't even understand or know. Like if I was, if I was trying to sell you a mortgage, Jesus, yes, I know quite a bit, but I should not step into that. That's not my field. So it's just knowing my field and perfecting it. And that's what like, I had the confidence because I could, I just talked to the camera as if it was a person. What helped me in the beginning was facing how the camera's facing a different way. Because mm-hmm. I'm not like, oh, my stupid mirror. Mm-hmm. Like, it's good you didn't let me see Yeah. Oh, you, oh, like. doing it. Yeah, doing like the selfie angle. Oh, it's bad <laughs> yeah. when you have selfie angle because you're like, I look dumb. But, and I also got the humor out of it. Like, we, we take ourselves way too seriously. Yes. Like, people, one, if you want to be like the hello, I try to be like, oh, well, I want to be professional. And I'm like, mm, this isn't for that. I think also social media has different stages. I feel that. YouTube is like LinkedIn, which apparently I need to work on mine, but I'm going to work on my LinkedIn and my YouTube. And your YouTube. I haven't I brought am. that subject up no, yet. But. I'm not offended. I'm not offended. <laughs> if you guys know anyone who can help me edit YouTube's, I just, I think of YouTube so highly that I want to do it perfect. And that's the problem where like people aren't doing social media because they want it perfect. I just need to do it. Mm-hmm. And, and so that's something that I'm trying to, me and my I wouldn't even, coming. I wouldn't even edit them. I would just, uh, did when? you save all the videos you've done so far? Do you have yeah. them? In the I would just load them all onto YouTube. Okay. I mean, why? why yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, this. all the ad, all the all the addresses that you you know you you if you're yeah. walking through a house is I, I you know I I've say time and time again, um, in fact I had um, Jordan and uh, Jacqueline uh, Gallup on, mm-hmm. and now their background they had a little media background and understanding of it, and uh, you know they've got a video he said it's two years old, it's got twenty one thousand hits if you go on their on their uh, YouTube page. But he got a lead from it the other day. The guy told me, saw, I saw your you know, video, and he's, it's a video he did two years ago. Yeah. And people are Googling, and Google and YouTube are married. Yep. It's going to pop up. This podcast will pop up. You, they Google you after because this, this is streaming live to YouTube right now. And probably tomorrow, if you go and Google yourself, you'll see the live version. Now, eventually, I post a one with a thumbnail and all that stuff next week. But it's going to pop up. Mm-hmm. So... The video, video, video is what they're all telling all the agents. Yep. But I think you, you hit on the, the the nail on the head. Don't I mean? Yeah, you, you if you know the girls like to, you know make sure your you know your hair you know you yep. you look you want to look presentable. Guys are lucky. We just go for it. <laughs> you know. Are you lucky in that way? Well, <laughs> I don't know. Well, God bless that. You know they make females attracted to guys that look like us. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> Whatever. God works in mysterious ways. <laughs> and, but all the people who know and love you already know your quirks. So when they see you on the video, it doesn't change. It's like we're sitting right here. And yeah. if you you and I, you know, we, we've had numerous conversations every time, you know, you like to sit the way you sit or whatever. I mean, that's just the way you are. That's the way you are. So you know, people don't even think about it a lot of times, but your brain is actually retaining it. And it's retaining it through the video yep. as well, just as we, as clearly as even us just sitting right here. So, but to, to Google you and see you on the video, being natural. And, and I, I think Jordan and Jacqueline said it very clearly. People, because you're being authentic, because you were, you, you were talking about that in that podcast, being mm-hmm. authentic, being you, they are creating a relationship with you and they haven't even met you yet yep. because they're watching you in your videos. Yeah. Yeah. And like, even it goes beyond videos. Like even when you meet people, but the bridal shows, when I talk to the people, I'm like, Hey, let's have a meeting. We'll get down. I'm their best friend. Mm -hmm. Like they already know me. And I'm like, I had a TikTok size conversation with you. Like we literally had a three set and it just like being authentic. You connect with someone so deeply that like those brides and groups think they've known me for years. And it's just, I've, I met them for 30 seconds, maybe the same anxiety that people have to get in front of the video often have the same anxiety when they're meeting someone new. Yeah. Right. You, you've got clients coming in. You don't even know what they look like. They're coming, even if they're coming into your, your, your blessed, they're coming in your office or maybe you're meeting at a coffee shop, let, you know, let alone if you meet them at a house and you don't even know what they look like yet. Right. That's, you shouldn't be doing that, but <laughs> hopefully you forewarned them, right. With the forewarned with, yeah. Florida Realtor, right? But the, if they're watching the video, they, when they approach you, 
are different because they have the same anxiety. They're like, mm-hmm. hey, what's this agent going to be like? This is going to be one of these agents that's got this card that makes them look like the ja- a Jaguar cheerleader from 15 years ago. But yeah. now they, you know, right. You know, they got to up the, you know, they don't know. And yeah. I mean, there's a lot of times, I mean, I brought in a lot of agents. I've seen their cards, seen their stuff on social media and they got the glamour shot thing going on mm-hmm. and that's great. But then they, then when they walk in here, I'm like, okay, is that, Oh, it's happened to me. We're yeah. like, I thought we had a new agent. I was like, hi, nice to meet you. And they were like one of our top agents. I was like, God, I did not recognize you. I was like, no offense, no offense. You hadn't seen them in a while. and I've never met them in person. Oh, like, never met them in person. <laughs> so I was like, oh, you look so different. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so if you're doing regular video, the people are building this relationship with you. And I think it if you want to get somewhere quicker and as far as the relationship is going, that's the ticket. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, cuz they'll just they'll just open up to you cuz when you when you start asking those more sensitive questions, well, if they've been watching your videos, they should already know this is coming, right? Yep. In in a way, in a shape or form. All right, so the first year you went you said you went to a you didn't go to the brokerage your friend was at. No, I didn't. The one who told me to get into real estate, I didn't follow him. Yeah, <laughs> which is odd. But <laughs> what chose you? What, what, how did you choose your first brokerage? I actually met a mom friend and we met. I told her I was getting my real estate license. Funny enough, she was a real estate agent and her mom ran a brokerage. And I was like, do you know what? And I was like, can I have my daughter there? That's all I cared about. Mm-hmm. And they're like, yeah, bring her to meetings because she just had a baby. Literally, I think our kids are like two days apart. Mm-hmm. And so we just brought our kids to trainings. And the fact that I could, rather than the brokerage my friend was at, was not allowing it. Mm. I'd be gone for eight weeks in training. And I'm like, I can't, I just had a baby. Like, yeah. crazy. And so I was having separation anxiety. And I was also still serving tables. So I didn't have the flexibility. Like, I had to be serving tables at four o'clock. Right. For early bird special. And so, <laughs> like, always, and so I just had to be there. And that was just the season I was in. And it just, mm. it worked for it. So not a lot of, you didn't go out. I mean, you had, it sounds like you had talked to some agents, Mm -hmm. but it was more the convenience of that was more a priority than actually researching deeply. And one of your girlfriends wants to get into real estate. How important is it? You know, we talked about on the coattails for getting a mentor or someone like that, but going out and investigating, talking to agents that not just the brokers, Mm -hmm. you know, the, 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 People say it all the time. Basically, it's like you're interviewing someone. Two people lying to each other, right? The broker's telling you how great it is. They got technology and education. Mm-hmm. You know, they, everyone has that, okay? Yeah. Where, what, how are they actually working and talking to the agents? And is this how you want to do your business? Even though they don't really know how they're going to do their business just yeah. yet. But, they, you know, uh, I think personalities like minds attract. Yep. Yeah, you know, type of thing. So, I mean, if you were, again, talking to your girlfriend, how important would you say, hey, you need to go out and you need to probably talk to four or five different, yes. not even brokers, but four or five agents as well that match up with those brokers just so that you can confirm what the broker's telling you is actually what's being yes. delivered. And yeah. so I did interview like three. Mm-hmm. One I knew I didn't want to go to because way before I got my license, my husband was planning on getting it. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I do this better. <laughs> and um, here we are. Um, but he's great. He's handling our insurance. He's doing what he needs to do. Right. But with, I interviewed a couple. He already interviewed a few for me that I did not want to. I'm like, I don't want to be a part of that. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm just not what I'm interested in. And not where I wanted to be as an agent without knowing. I, w- I would 100% like I tell them each time because they're like, of course, people would meet me. And they're like, I want to be like you. I want to come to Momentum. John and Brittany know if I think that they're not momentum, I'm going to say, I don't know if that's the best start for you. For new agents, I mean, it is hard because picking a brokerage that'll help you get to the level of actually jumping off, that's what's hard. Mm -hmm. And so making sure you find the right one that fits because there are some that are great that help a lot of new agents. I don't want to market like that. I'm not a cold caller, so I probably wouldn't work at a few brokerages I could think of. I'm not going to cold call anyone. I'm not a call center. So it's just, it doesn't work like that. So it wouldn't ever work. And then what was hard is in the... So digging into what their ideology is, because everyone has, you know, you're, you know, we all talked about what are the basic things you can do as a real estate agent, like knock on doors, Mm -hmm. you know, cold call. I mean, the the list is, you know, pretty standard there. Finding out what are they doing? Yep. Is that their mentality at this ex brokerage over here? They want everyone to cold call. And uh, who are their top agents? And how did their top agents get there? There's so many questions now. Of course, now it looks different as like moving up in the industry. 
<laughs> without tooting my horn, mm. but moving up in the industry, like what, what am I looking for? I'm looking at top agents. When top agents leave our brokerage, I immediately call them. What immediately. happened? Yeah. 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 Why did you leave? What value do you not see here that you see there? Right. What is it? And call me. What did I miss? <laughs> like, yeah, like, yeah. Am, I, am I missing something in my business that you feel is important for yours? Yeah. But nine times out of 10, I call, I call them after 60, 90 days. I'm like, how's it going? And they're like, mm. and I was like, oh, and they're like, it set back my business because I had to learn X, Y, Z. I'm like, mm, I ain't got time for that. Yeah. And so it's just kind of like realizing which ones have what to offer. What do you find in some of those conversations was like one of the main reasons was a splits or what, what, what is there? Was there a common theme in some of those people couple, you've talked to? A couple were money. Yeah. Like, but it's funny because then they'd switch to another brokerage that took more money. And I'm like, that doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. And then other ones were just like. They had a different vision than my broker did. And I was like, okay, that's perfectly yeah. fine. That makes sense. Yeah. Or they were a team and they wanted less of something or they wanted more technology. All this different stuff or more. I know one agent left and I almost like, I mean, I wanted the bells and the whistles of the pretty little books that are so fancy and all this stuff. Like it definitely drew me in because I'm so marketing forward and I like to do these big presentations and everything. And so it's like, that's attractive. But I'm like, but how much would it be if I did it? And I started calculating. I was like, mm, that ain't worth that split. And so it's just, for me, it's money. Yeah. Because I'm like, where's going to give me more money? Like, I already make good money. Well. Or lead gen people care about too. That's a big reason I believe. Because you just contradicted your bio, but. It's uh, fine. Go ahead. <laughs> that I don't care about On money. the money part. So uh, it's but, my husband's mindset. Yeah. That I just follow. Because it is like. Well, you come to an age of where you're at in your careers. Mm -hmm. Now, this the new person that we're saying, hey, you need to go find a brokerage that really caters and can really take you off the ground because this is where you're at as far as your real estate, uh, you know, mentality, educate, whatever le you know, level. You're, you're on the ground, so you need to go. And there's obviously a couple of national brokerages here um, and regional brokerages that, that really cater to that. Mm -hmm. And their whole plan and they've got trainers that are there to, to be there for them all the time where um i wouldn't say momentum's a it's a you know uh what do, I don't, you're not going to call momentum a boutique brokerage because you got he's got hundreds of agents but it's still um john's not spending money on hiring a trainer and paying the salary for this person mm -hmm. to, because he's not bringing on 20 fresh out of licensing agents every month to put them through these you know, through the steps. If you were doing that, you would need that full-time trainer doing that. Correct. You know, so the, you know, so momentum again, might not be perfect for that brand new agent coming out unless they're riding someone's coattails. Yeah. Yeah. True. You touched on those two things I want to, I want to, oh, since you just mentioned it, the, the fancy presentation. Yes. What, what, have, what, have, what, do, what do you do? What, what have you discovered in your, you know, years in, in trial and error? Uh, do you need the fancy booklet in, all that type of thing because now listing appointments, you guys are competing a lot for listing appointments yes. right now um, because the uh, listings are rising. Inventory is being on there. Um, customers are, sh uh, it's not so, yeah, you got to answer the phone. That is a number one, but a lot of them aren't calling you saying, Hey, I found a property. I need you to go and make an offer for me. Mm -hmm. You're having to actually earn their, you know, show a little more yeah. value. Correct. So what do you do uh, yourself? You know, uh, some people believe in the fancy booklet. Mm -hmm. What what's your what's your thought? I love the fancy booklet, with the hard cover, and all that looks like a child book. It's mm -hmm. beautiful. Um, mm -hmm. It just and I, I'm not going to stop loving it. Maybe one day I'll, I'll do it and I'll print it and it'll be like a demi Judd version. Mm -hmm. I've just made my own and printed my own. Like I have, I have two different. I print everything out because I want people to have it. I actually drop these off the day before my listing appointment because I want them to read it. I don't want them to be in my presentation when I'm trying to see what their house looks like and that spending an hour going through my book. So I'd rather have that conversation and they already know my compensation and everything like that. First YouTube video right here. Go ahead. <laughs> um, and so when I drop off the, the thing, <laughs> I don't want to give away too many tips. Um, I do use my past into like what I do for my presentation. So my presentations are very, Demi, but I do that for my sellers, and so they have the box. They kind of have a little whole entire little get together in that. Do you, are you a Kristen Mashore? Do you follow Kristen Mashore? I don't. Okay, you ought to look her up. To. You ought to look her up on uh, Instagram. Yeah. Okay. 
I had her on the show. She's out in California, but she does the, she has the whole process, but she's what she's also, she's a big funnel person. You know, she markets these certain neighborhoods, farms them, anyone that's searching, boom, she's popping up, they're clicking on it and obviously going into a funnel to get their information. But she also does the boxes, kind of like I think LPT is doing that now, where you actually drop off this, you know, attractive box um, in there. Krista actually has a book which you can insert your name and personality into and make it look like it's yours. Oh. And, yeah, you know, just. I to, might have because that sounds familiar, the book part. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then, so I do that, but then for my buyers, I've just created a bunch of guides of questions. So I have a relocation guide. I have a new construction guide. I have a buyer's guide. I have a, how to um, sell your home and buy a home at the same time. Like I just created a ton of marketing product when I had nothing to do as an agent. And I was like, now I fix it because it's, you know, school zones change mm -hmm. all the time. So it's just like updating on what's going on. But I, my main thing was like, how can I provide value that is different from another agent? Because when you're online and you're on social media, everyone's just, I need an agent. The amount of business cards I see, I want to throw hands with some agents that I'm like, that's how you're going to market yourself as a, a business card. And I've even, even my buyer's agent home training, I was like, do not just put your information or just tag yourself. And I was like, don't do that. No one cares. And I was like, add value. Show that you can already answer a question mm -hmm. that they're asking or have not asked yet. And so now, instead of just saying, hey, Demi Judd is a great real estate agent, you should do it all of that. Just say, hey, by the way, we have some resources and tools that have really helped a lot of out-of-state buyers. Here's the current schools that are coming to the area, if a school was a question. Right. And then it links to my blog, to my website, and then I capture their information from my website. But providing the value is 100%. And even I have the guides that I have, the relocation guides, now, instead of just, oh, here's my guide, I'm like, hey, I really think we should have a conversation. There's a couple of things in the guides. I just want to make sure you fully understand about St. John's, and I can answer questions that may not be in it. And then I have a consultation. And nine times how many questions. how many of them you find? And, and it's important I'm, that anyone listening, I'm asking this question. We know a lot of people are not actually reading that before they meet you the next day. Yeah, I mean, there's yeah. a good percentage. Yeah. I don't know whatever it is, but we know just people aren't into reading long form. I mean, yeah. they don't get newspapers anymore, right? Mm -mm. They. That's why I was saying your first YouTube video should be a video of your guide. Yeah. Because they will get the physical guide in their hand, which is good that they have something physical in their hand. They feel they've, you know, there's something there, right? Yeah. They, they got their hands on it. Um, but if you put the, you know, YouTube link or QR code where they, they click that and go to your, your YouTube where you're actually, you know, going through the guide. Now maybe just a generic guide of the gym, but now they're going, Oh, Oh, on page 10 there, she's talking about schools. Oh, I need to go and look at that. Yep. That would be my recommendation to you. This is a thought that just came to my head yeah. of, you know, here, click the you, the QR code. I'm going through that guide of what's in it. You may never read it, but if I mention something that's really good, your guide is you actually tailored ahead. to your, what you're looking to, you know, do your neighborhood that you're looking at or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's yeah. Great. Because I, I think again, if people, they would rather just, I see my wife had to get something fixed on the, car or something or even I, there was something wrong with my mirror on the car i just go on youtube and i put in yeah. 2019 dodge ram mirror not working boom there's something there people are more apt to do that than if i actually had this hey here's this 20 page pdf on how to oh, fix yeah. that they're like mm -hmm. oh whatever yeah, <laughs> yeah. What you need. yeah who who opens the owner's manuals anymore in the cars right it, it's all on it's all on video now yeah yeah couldn't tell you where mine was yeah <laughs> That's probably why my wife couldn't find hers the other day. I bet you it wouldn't doubt it if Volvo would just put them on video. Because, yeah, yeah, no one. QR code per item. They just put QR codes on the yeah. items. It's easier to search in the video as well. You can get right to what they want, you yeah. know? Yeah. So sitting there flipping the page. Yeah. But that would, that, that I think I would be the first YouTube video for you. Yeah. That, that was just a thought that came to my, my head. I want to go back to. Because you were talking a lot with teams, and you know, again, uh, you know, your goal. You said you brought on a buyer's agent and so forth. Different people, leaders, people have been doing this for twenty years. I've heard a lot. You know, obviously talked to over two hundred top agents, brokers, and I was like, everyone has a little different idea of who should be the first person. When you started hitting your lid, uh, is what I call it from John Maxwell. He talks about hitting your lid. Hey, I can't take on any more customers. I need help. 
what were some of the advice? I assume you searched out some advice. What worked for you? Um, like how I found my person. Well, no, just you know, what was what was some of the advice that you got on you know what should be you know, to help you relieve you of some of these chores that are required. A lot of people don't see that they're under the surface, but there's a lot of back office stuff that needs to be done, or like I said, sitting open houses and you know whatever it may be. What were some of the, some of the things that people told you to do, and then what did you end up doing? Yeah, perfect, because yeah. they're two different things. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, since I even joined, and I when I left my team, I left my team about three months after I joined Momentum, and I went on my own in the summer of 22, and I talked to John, and John, you need to leverage. And I was like, how do I leverage? I don't have any business. So you had been working solo up until going to go into Momentum? No, so I was a part of a team. I switched okay. with my previous team to Momentum in April, and then I left in June, and I went on my own in June. All right, so let me step back. Let's let's so we get a little more chronological order here. Okay. What was your experience on the team? What did you take from that? What did you like? Oh, I am not going to do it that way. I would say so. People have different feelings towards teams, mm -hmm. and like when they leave teams, um, mine took some growth to have the response I have today. One hundred percent. I would not be where I am. Were you on team. a fairly newish team that was being created, was, or were you? It was an established, like it was more of like a two to three person team before I joined on, mm -hmm. and then it just kind of. Um, I was like, hey, um, I saw an agent who was succeeding, and I was like, I want to be like you, right? And I like immediately, like I was just like, just teach me social media, like let's go. And so I guess you would almost say like I tried to ride someone's coattail, but I never used that. I guess their success for it. Mm -hmm. I was just like, how do I do it? Demi. And I joined and um, I learned that the FAR contract in and out, which I'm very I think upset. I may call this episode the Demi way, but go ahead. Okay. I don't mind that. <laughs> uh, oh no. Everyone's going to fall. <laughs> um, but when I met with them, I was just like, this is what I want to do. I sat down. I know that NEFAR contract in and out. I'm very upset that it's going away because I knew it's so good. I got taught for hours about how to negotiate, how to do things, how to put on a listing. They gave me my first buyer and walked me through the process. I had a lot of support and then the team started growing and it just, I feel like when we switched brokerages, kind of like the the vision changed for the team. The whole team. The whole team's vision changed. Move, and broke, whole team moved brokerages. Whole team moved brokerages. No. We had about, <clears throat> by that time we had about six people and we moved over and it just was a lot of, changing in seasons like someone like my, one of my teen leads was having a baby and so that was a lot and she was very sick from being pregnant and then my other team lead you know had to control six girls and so, <laughs> and so it's just like it's it's a lot and all of us were in different places and it was it was just really difficult so, I was just so like, you had from very green agent to someone experienced could just do it on their own if they want they didn't need to yeah from the different levels and everything in between so that's interesting topic there when, when building a team when you've got everyone at multiple levels that's six different plates that you're spinning because they're different you know seasons of their career yep yeah and so it was definitely some just started going different ways or going to different brokerages they just started making their decisions because it just got to the point where no one had the same vision anymore and that's what was so important to continue the vision and i i met with john and Brittany, and i was like what if i went on my own and i was like i don't know if i can make it and i was like but it's like one of those things where it's like if I even told my team lead this, I was like, I think I'm going to go my own way. If this is not what I'm supposed to do and I completely fail, I will be more than happy to come back with my tail behind my legs. Mm -hmm. That's just what happened. Mm -hmm. And I was like, but if I don't, I, th I think I just need to try, though. And took the leap. The next month, I was top agent in my brokerage. <laughs> <laughs> well, so the, one of the message mastermind I was at on Friday. And we were talking about teams. I mean, and, 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 you know, we, for some reason, whatever reason, this particular topic didn't come up. But I think it's very interesting. You just brought it up. When you, if you think you need one, a team of agents, and they are all at different seasons of their career, you're spinning six different plates. Mm -hmm. And in your case, all of a sudden you become, you know, that, that even though this is not the full part of the jack of all trades, master of none, you're jack of six people, yeah. but mastering none of them because you're not, you're mastering the value in them because as any brokerage or any team, if you're not adding value as the team lead, 
in there or they don't see value. Maybe the team, you know, circulates around themselves and that's where the value is. If the value is no longer there, they're going to spin off. Uh, and that is a huge challenge for uh, retention. And we were talking about John earlier, how, you know, John and Brittany are so brilliant. And John's always out there searching, you know, to just bring you guys something new and different and, and, and keep you guys. Th- that's the value he adds, being an active owner of the, of the brokerage. All right. So you, you, you go over there. What is your business like at that point? Are you at a, at a lid or all of a sudden you just ramp up real quick and you I hit just- a lid? ramp up like I went from oh my gosh like nothing because by this time that I left I only have closed two deals one was handed to me one I found on social media the lady was selling her furniture and I was like hey if you need anything like I felt like it was a divorce situation Mm -hmm. she loved me I ended up listing her house and so Mm -hmm. like it was just like that's the and that's where I realized the power of social media and I was like oh okay and literally just popped off and I was like oh my gosh and I was like okay but I'm not there yet so I Went through the rest of 22, and I was like, let's see what I could do. I want to cap. They have a a send program at Momentum for Mm -hmm. new agents. And I was like, if I could make that, I'll feel good. Well, I did. And I was like, sweet. And I was like, but I want to be in the top 500. And I was like, that's my goal, Mm -hmm. which I did. I mean, a Jack's real producer. Is that what you're talking about? Top 500? Yeah. And so I really wanted to be able to, you know, be in up there in my numbers and I wanted to be one of the big ones that people <laughs> looked up to and that it just it literally was organically happening the way I can actually fully say I even had to verify this morning I've never bought a lead ever I've never not Zillow not any that I, not even the mojo dialer that we were doing because I sucked at it <laughs> but I didn't actually I just literally made it a joke because I can't cold call <laughs> I get offended when they hang up on me <laughs> and but I just and then from producing and become like creating content online, which I'm sure if I popped off my YouTube, it would even be different. It's more of, I talked to John, we saw what I did last year and what I was heading towards and what I'm heading towards this year. And he's like, you're going to burn out or you're going to cap out. And he's like, you need to, you need to pick this up. And I was like, okay. And he's like, you need to hire before you're ready. And now having her a part of me. This is the brilliance of John. I mean, I give him credit. I I probably should have him back on the show, but I don't think enough brokers are doing that right there Yeah. for looking at you. Just like, you know, if you were one of his, one of his employees, you know, in looking at you where you're at and seeing your trend. Because I, knowing him in this, you know, he's all about numbers and so forth like that, as brilliant as he is, he's looking at trends. Mm -hmm. I guarantee it. And he's seeing you trending up at that time. I even, I remember when I called him when I was leaving, I was sobbing with when I did leave my team. (laughs) I I was like, I'm so, like, I, because I still had that nine to five mentality. Like, I work for someone. And he's like, you're a business owner. (laughs) Like, you're good. He's like, you're going to kill it. And it was cool, like. I've been so blessed with people who have seen it in me because I have huge imposter syndrome. And people are just like, you're killing it. And I was like, it's fake. And just to now be like, I, I finally am like, oh my gosh, like I'm, I'm doing it. And now I, I do need people. And I finally, I should have, and I wish I would have listened before. Because even though I have her now, yeah, I hired her back in February. I needed her last year because of where this year's heading. Mm-hmm. And so there's only, I really held myself up by not hiring faster. I think there's so many. So you mentioned Jack's Real Producers. Mm -hmm. If you make Jack's Real Producers, you're hitting the lid. Mm -hmm. If you don't already have Mm -hmm. help at that time. So if you, if you're being invited to one of those cocktail parties quarterly or, 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 you know, uh, being featured in the magazine, whatever you're, you're getting notified that you're uh, made uh, Kristen's list. You are maxing your time out. If you do not have help at that moment in time. Yeah. Oh yeah, I'm t- I'm blessed and terrified at the same time because I've been very fortunate that each year I've doubled my year. Mm-hmm. Well, my year last year I finished out in the end of June, and mm-hmm. I'm like, I literally kicked my butt for that last year, and now I did it halfway through the year. That just shows I I need to hire mm-hmm. and I need people and I need leverage. But like you said, what are things that you need to learn? I I didn't have back end done. Like all the back end of real estate, the I didn't know what a PL was mm-hmm. like until like I had my coach and she's like, I'm sorry, what? And I was like, My CPA hates me. <laughs> like yeah. we're we're not friends right now. <laughs> um, <laughs> but she she's great, but I had nothing. And I was like, I was told three to five years that'll happen. And I was like, it didn't happen in three to five years. It happened in less than three. And so how do I basically 
still keep my momentum, no pun intended, <laughs> still keep my momentum for like business and naturally having it. Like it, it's crazy how natural it has happened. Like it's one of those things where you're like, you really feel like the puzzle piece fit. Cause like I, I got all of a sudden you find that one piece that leads you to, to the, the <laughs> rest just, of the puzzle. Yeah, right. Where you're like, this is the rest of it. And it's crazy to see like, how everything has fallen into place. But yeah, I did not have um, that end. And I wish I, I was like asking my husband, I was like, do you want to do this on the side? All right. So let's, you, you, you I know you brought the coach in since last August. Cause you when I remember you on that other podcast, you didn't, you didn't have a coach at that time. Yeah. She's new. Yeah. So you, you come on with John. He, he says, Hey, you need to do something. So again, what are, what were some of the things that they told you? Assistant, transaction coordinator, marketing person, Another partner up with another agent. I imagine all those things you heard. Yep. Right. What did you decide to do? I had a TC. I love my TC. I actually hired their TC because I'm like, okay, you guys handle. So is that a pay for play? T I call it pay for play, but pay for transaction. Yeah, per yeah. transaction, and she's mm. amazing. And yeah, it's been great. She's very demi, and I love it. I actually have two just in case I get too very crazy. demi. I don't, I, mean, I don't know. I'm gonna, this, she's very demi. I, I got. I'm going to come up with a title for this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> but she was absolutely, she was great, and I love her. Um, so I have two of them just in case I get too crazy. But and then who else? Are there? I. Jim. You have a main transaction coordinator, and then I have a backup. You have a backup because they're pay for play. They they're getting business from other agents. They may get. Full. Correct. Yeah. Yep. Or, um, I mean, even technically, I mean, I've been counting on clientele. I know that sounds really silly, but I'm like, okay, if this is a, you know, a quick and easy transaction, I actually do it. I do a price point. And that's how, like, I'm like, okay, this is what this is going to, because I have higher end clients and I'm like, okay, they're going to need mm -hmm. a Demi. And so I'm like, okay, there, you have her. You have me. Right. There it is. Well, there's a lot of you, a lot of the agents, as a lot of you, a lot of the agents uh, like have several mortgage loan officers depending on who they're talking to yeah. and the different personalities. Correct. Like I have some clients who are like, I only work with XYZ. I want them to be, have a family. I want them to have really. And I was like, you're very picky. Like, I was like, <laughs> yeah, that is a little. Can, whatever you need. Uh, <laughs> and I haven't had a specific sports team they're requesting though. Yet, so I'm waiting for that one. Like they have to like the Jags. So I'm like, okay. But... I mean, I should have, there's some people, like, I should have hired my coach fast enough. I could not, I, I made the mistake because I was being told one thing in my ear at home and then one thing from, like, real estate that definitely get a coach, don't get a coach. And so it was just, like, two really hard things. Are you doing one-on-one -on -one coaching or, or groups? One-on-one. -on -one. One -on -one. Yep. Uh, how long have you been doing it now? Uh, for about two months. Okay. So you're probably still in the, um, you know, they're digging into your business a little bit, or at least for most of these first two months, how often, once a week or every other week? Once a week. Once a week. Yep. So that they're digging in into your business. So tell us what brought you to the point of, of wanting, of making the jump and actually hiring your coach. It was the fact that I just felt like I didn't, I have so many opportunities in real estate that I didn't know what direction to go. Because I was told from, oh, definitely have a team. And I'm like, God, this is miserable. And then like another, because I've been, I've been through a team, one of them that didn't succeed. One of them that kind of uh, took on a And that team is a broad word. A very broad word. And because like even technically, like my coach was like, you have a team. You have a TC and you have a buyer's agent. You have a team. Mm -hmm. And I was like, mm -hmm. yeah. and she's, you're just, you just have weird. The Judsters. That's what you should call them. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> But it just, I just didn't know what to do. And so I was like, I really, she's like, what do you like about it? What do you want to do? And so like, I always kept going back to, I want to coach. I want to coach, but I've never had a coach. How can you, it's like me saying, I'm going to go cook, coach the Jags. We would have the worst losing season mm -hmm. ever. What do you think it could be worse? It could, it just wouldn't, it wouldn't be good. I would encourage the heck out of them though. <laughs> be like, We're losing great. Um, it just, I wanted to make sure that I knew how to do it properly. And I thought I was crazy. Mm -hmm. I was like, is this what I want? Let me hear from her, like what my passions are and what I want to do. And then like really having that advice. You need that because your broker themselves, typically, especially momentum and being as large as they are, it's very difficult. I mean, the, let alone John looking at you and, hey, you're trending up. You need to hire somebody. That's what a broker should be doing. Um because he, he sees where you're at and he foreshadowed, in, you know, in the, the coach part, um, 
it's hard for them to be a coach for they can only the coach can only handle so many because they're digging deep into you yeah. and if they're focused on you they can't be, you know give so you know they're, they're going to miss a lot of other people yep. out there so uh the, the bring that other person it gives you that thirty thousand foot level of what's going on mm-hmm. and how did you decide on this coach if you want to mention their name that's totally up to you how did did you get some recommendations how did you decide that this was the coach for you I actually, I did Tom Ferry coaching. Okay. I just went ahead and pulled the trigger because like we had, I had a bunch of advice. We, John and Brittany, like I thought about doing their coach, but I'm like, I just run my business differently than they do. And so Mm -hmm. I didn't, I'm not going to match that. And so I was like, okay, well I I could just start off from ground level and I'll just do Tom Ferry coaching because my friend does it. He's very successful. He's the one who told me to be in real estate. I was like, if it worked for him. I've had an idea, but I'm not going to say it on air because someone's going to steal it. But it's going to relate to this. But go okay. ahead. Go ahead. Write it down. I'm writing it down. <laughs> but I was like, I really, I really do want to do this. And even they, they linked me up with a coach that I was like, my main thing, do not tell me to build a team. Like I literally, I was, <laughs> I was like, don't tell me to build a team because that's what everyone was telling me. And I was like, please stop. If that's what it ends up being cool again. Do you really want to babysit real estate agents? I mean, I, I'm using that term loosely babysit, but I mean. So I have a buyer's agent right now. She's great. Yeah. She's awesome. But there is times when I'm just like, there's just, I'm seeing the difference when I'm having her as a team member, as a buyer's agent. Mm-hmm. I'm like, you didn't do X, Y, Z. So why should I do this? So it's a different, like, why should I give you my business? Because you're not taking your business seriously, right. which no, it's just, we're in different levels and that's okay. And, but mentoring, I'm like, Hey, I'm helping guide you. It's your business. At the end of the day, I'm not giving you my business to make yours successful. I'm giving you the tools and the resources of how you can make it happen for you. And so that's like, I was like, I love that. So, so it's more of a two agents getting together. You cover her, she covers you. You So you can go on vacation or go home at night. You know, it's, it's something, something comes up, you know, you're covering each other. So you have that peace of mind. Yep. You go out of town, they can look at your emails, you know, let you know if there's actually something important there and that sort of thing. And that was one of the things they talked about the mastermind is, is just partnering up with another agent where you just commit. And then you don't even have to be in the same brokerage that you just have each other's yep. back and your licensed agents and... It's if exactly. someone says, hey, I know need to go see a house right now, and you're over at Disney World. Yeah. yeah. And I have mold- I have a really good friend, Caitlin, who I mentioned earlier. Like, she's amazing, and she's out of town this next weekend, and mm. she's having a listing go live. So I'm going to Staples and picking it up. I'm doing the open houses as if I was her. Like, so I'm her during mm-hmm. that weekend. And having that relationship with another agent, which is so weird because it was very taboo when I started. Oh, she- you can't be click. I'm like, I don't care. Like, we've I've shared my guides with her. And I was like, it's fine. Your clients are going to want you because she's complete. She's, a, I don't know if you know the disc course. Mm-hmm. She's my complete, I'm a DI, mm-hmm. very high. Mm-hmm. And she's an SC and that's just what she is. And so like we balance each other really well because I, I'll blow up. I'm like, can you believe this? <laughs> and she'll be like, but have you thought about it in this perspective? And I'm just like, no, <laughs> like, I'll call you in five minutes. <laughs> like, mm. just, so it's just having those relationships and those partnerships and those friendships that really you have that help. 10 out of 10. With the coach so far, just two months, mm-hmm. have you had an aha moment? Like, yeah, they brought up something and said, hey, did, have you ever thought about this? And you're like, oh my God, I know. What what aha moment did you have that you're like, wow? The the imposter problem that I have is just like, one, you've, you've made it, Demi. And I was like, oh, okay, cool. What does that mean? And so I'm like, <laughs> where do I go from here? And like how I want, I'm like, yeah, I, I do want a coach. And she's like, you need to... S- start doing whatever goes towards that. I was like, I don't have enough experience. I have, and she's like, what number in sales do you need to do till you understand you made it? And I was mm. like, nothing's enough. And <laughs> I'm so competitive. I'm such a high achiever yeah. that like, I literally think I could do 20 million in sales a year. And mm. I'd be like, didn't do enough. I could have done more. And this, <laughs> it's just the way that my personality, which is great. Yeah. But also it can get overbearing. Like when does it stop for my family not existing? <laughs> but she was really like, you just need to do it. And so I've been, helping some agents and meeting with them, doing niche workshops with them and talking to them about, hey, this works. And my friends have noticed I've been doing it to them nonchalantly. Hey, have you? And like kind of like talking to them as a coach. Right, and right. they're like, I know what you're doing. And I was like, I'm practicing. How is it? <laughs> so, so it's just like making 
Make well, if they've tra- she's this person's triggered thoughts in your head. Yeah. And now you're looking at other agents with the same question, you know, th- the same questions they're asking you and digging you and you're digging into your going and analyzing what you're doing. You're starting to analyze everybody else and oh, what yeah. they're doing. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. But that's been a huge help. And then also I, I have a P&L <laughs> sheet mm-hmm. now. I have all these apps to help me figure all that out. So really getting like my, my guts of my real estate done well. I feel like I wasn't really nurturing them. The outside looked great. Right. But I definitely, she's like, oh my gosh. (laughs) Well, I know John talks a lot about working smarter, not harder. And maybe you do less production, but obviously keep more money in your pocket if you're doing it right. And the only way to know that is is having the proper P&L and where you're spending your money at. Because yep. as, as you know, I, I think 99% of the agents out there, it, you know, they get this huge check. It flows in. They pay a bunch of pay a bunch of bills, and then they whatever they spend on the next, you know, listing or you know whatever their things are, not really actually evaluating, you know, you know, keeping within some industry norms like Tom Ferry would probably coach yeah. to, right? Yep. Yeah. And but yeah, that's the, that's the advice so far that I've mm-hmm. taken, mm-hmm. and also like my Google business page and like just tips where I'm just like. What? Because these are what I liked about the the culture of the Tom Ferry is that these are top agents not only from my area, it's top agents all across yeah. the world. Yeah. And so I'm just like, oh. And so there's like experts with Google that are like, hey, your Google business page do this, this, and this. And I'm like, are you freaking kidding me? I could do that? And that was just so cool. And so yeah. like, I never even thought like that was possible or things on Instagram. And now I have on my Instagram what the topics are. And she, they're like, how would I know what I'm clicking on? I was like, yeah, we're, the the world's moving so fast with the technology. You know, you know AI's out, and that's all. We're you know we're scrolling through, and everyone, oh, you you need you need to get an AI, or you're gonna get lost behind. Well, before we know it, everything that we that we do is gonna have AI generated behind it. It's not that I I don't believe there is you know that people need to like I, I don't know. There's courses out there you can take because. You you could really go and chat GPT. I carry carry. I apologize. Last name starts with S. Swap. She was on a podcast not two two months ago, but she's AXP's AI consultant. She is an agent as well, but she's dedicated herself. Now she's going to chat GPTs and creating GPTs for real estate. And there's a conference in September in Niagara, which I'd really like to go because it's a great time to go up there and cool off in September in Niagara. But it's all about real estate and AI. But there's a lot of these things that you could set up. But I think before we know it, all these companies, all the things, everything we're using, the CRMs, all the different things, they're all going to be using some uh, level of AI behind them. It's not that you you need to go out there and learn or get a degree in, in artificial intelligence. It's just going to be part of everything we're using because those companies are out there that are selling that stuff to us. Have to, or it's how they're going to be competitive. They have to use AI. Yep. Period. So you're going to use it no matter whether you realize it or not. Mm-hmm. It's there. But you, yeah, we can get distracted by all these things and, and what should we be doing on Instagram to take time and have that coach and say, okay, by next week, you're going to do this. To, you know, get your Google business page. Because once yeah. Google, once LinkedIn is set up, once Google business page is set up, there's not much you do to it, mm-hmm. you know, even on a yearly basis. It's it's there. That's that's in, and you, you roll. You may add some content to it by throwing some articles in there. Yeah. But I, I think if we we get caught up and we in and I'm notorious. I know this because I am uh, guilty of it as anyone else. It, all of a sudden we get a paralysis or we get distracted. We do a little bit over here and a little bit over here, but never actually finish what we were doing over there. Yep. Yeah. Let's I'm gonna wrap this up. You said something. I, I just wrote this down. I don't know if this is an exact quote from that podcast, but I was like, I got to, I'm going to dig deep on this because I like going in this area. Finding you in the industry. Yes. You remember saying that? Yeah. Yes. Explain that. Like just finding your own your own spot. Like everyone has their own spot. Everyone has their own clientele. I mean, when I was a wedding planner, people didn't want to work with my boss. Sometimes they wanted to work with me and it's just you, you're selling you. Like how can you brand your real estate? Like people knew that like I was the guide person. Now everyone's having guides, which mm-hmm. is perfectly fine. I'm the <laughs> original, but I mean, <laughs> I'll give you guys credit, but no, I just, the guides, like just, mm-hmm. it made me that people knew I was a, like a resource. And so or they know that people like I'm. I'm funny. I'm gonna have to be lighthearted about it. I'm going to. People know I'm mainly relocation. Like kind of like branding yourself, and branding yourself is important. Like I make sure that one like 
people understand that I'm, I'm going to be there through the entire thing, setting expectations, but just be, be you in the industry mm -hmm. is the main thing. It's just people know who they're getting. They know the product, know your product. If you don't know who you are and who you want to be in this industry, like you need to do some soul searching because every agent's the same. Just like how I was saying on the thing where they're like, mm -hmm. oh, I put my business card. Or, well, they think every agent's the same. I mean, they, they it, do. it looks like it on the bookshelf. You're all the same until you actually reach and open the book. Yeah. yeah, and some books are blank. Mm -hmm. um, and, <laughs> and that's the thing with even back to a little bit of the coaching. Like I, I want to help. I can't change an industry. There, there's an industry issue that's a whole different thing. But I can change a life of an agent. And so having buyers, and I think with the new lawsuit coming up, are really going to be what quality do you add? What value do you actually add to me? Because now they're paying for the quality. Possibly we'll find out. But now they have to pay for it. So it's just like, I feel like there's going to be a level of expectation of how it should be. And you need to be and know your product and mm -hmm. you should know yourself and, or what self you want to sell because people are going to start looking for that more than just like you, you just sell it. You just open doors. Awesome. Don't let them believe that mm -hmm. because my clients know I do more than open doors. They know that I'm like new construction. I'm there almost bi-weekly until that's closed. That house is my house. People know that that is my, I am them while they're gone. And I think that helped with wedding planning mm -hmm. that I was, I was the bride. So I step into that role as I am your home coordinator. I'm your homemaker. I make this happen until you own it. And when your deeds on the your name's on the deed, we're good. That's your job, decision. your job as a wedding planner is to make sure there's nothing on that runway, that it's a clear path. Yep. And you're going to tell them that it's 20 steps to the altar. And when you leave here, the limo is going to be right here at this moment in time. You're coordinating all that and foreshadowing, going through that, that with them. And you're doing the same thing with your clients. You're yep. setting expectations. You're, you know, you're going out and, and, you know, cleaning garages out, you know, after someone moved out, <laughs> you know, all the things you guys do. Uh, I wish someone, I'm sure there's a video out there, but these are videos that need to be, to, to be brought oh, out. I want to make a horror, like yeah. one, maybe during Halloween, I'll do it. It's like the scariest things I've been through, through real estate. Oh yeah. Like, it's been wild. You wait six months after you take the pictures and post it. That way the people that are like, you know, they <laughs> they're not, you're done working with them or, or you yeah, have type of thing. But these are, these are the things that I think that they're going to bring out um, it, with this, with the loss is, is, is raising the uh, awareness. Um, but that goes back to you. You know, I could say, I, I was just thinking about your YouTube page that you need to start working on because th yeah. this is, but a lot of agents are, you know, like you said, how do they, you know, you use the term brand, you know, you are the brand and there, you don't know what, how you don't, you don't really care what house is. If, as long as they want, they, they want that house. It's their choice. That's the house they want. You're selling, you're, you're going to help them make that transaction. You, you're, you're not selling a house. You are selling you ultimately in the course of the day to gain 100%. the business. Then you're guiding them to the house. You're selling them your, your professionalism, your knowledge, you know, like you said, your due diligence, all those, to, all those things. That's what you're actually selling. Yep. And yep. the product has to be cohesive later. So I feel like what some agents do is they're like, stellar agents closing table peace out my clients like i have client events i have events there's mm -hmm. a vip page like everyone like my brand continues it's kind of like coke like i want everyone to know my name everywhere yeah they turn so well, like i want to be yeah first name no you're 100 percent. and every great agent that i've had on it talks about it's it's yeah you you go through that initial battle but now it's it's how can how can that one because now you just marketed yourself you just showed them all the things that I just mentioned listed off there. Now it's like, how can I stay top of mind? Mm -hmm. So they are that they love me. Now they're going to tell hopefully two or three other people. Yeah. Or yeah. it's their time to actually be your friend. Like I tell mm -hmm. them like now we're friends. Like right. now we get to actually like, I've done pedicures with people. Like I've gone out with the moms and like mm -hmm. just like, been real. And they're like, gosh, they're like, this is, I was like, I can say anything now. Right. I was like, until we're under contract again, right. I am. Free. Well, you've had a lot of those frank conversations, you know, about the, the subject property, but anything you want to add? I'll wrap it up here. No, just hundred percent be yourself. When I start coaching, if you guys are interested, let me know, <laughs> um, but really just be yourself. And I, and it's hard not to be an imposter syndrome, but really listen to those around you. The people who are around you are going to tell you the most honest. So I, I really picked three people I really trust. And I was like, you know, tell me if you were to have to describe me in three words. Mm -hmm. And that's what really started helping me because it was less about 
what I, how finding I see you. myself. Anyway, going yeah. back to the finding you yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah. Because people know who you are. Mm-hmm. And I've had clients like, how was your experience? Tell me in three words. And I'm like, put one, put that in a Google review. But then like really to know who you are by who people around you are saying you are too. And maybe you might hear some words you might need to learn. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. You no. might. Very good advice. <laughs> Appreciate you coming on. Thank you so much. Thank you.